strong people, Kale Beck here from StartingStrongMan.com. Thanks for all the new subscribers. Hope you're enjoying World's Strongest Man as much as I am. Today was the dreaded last man standing stone day, day three of the qualifiers, the final day of the qualifiers. We now know everyone who is going to World's Strongest Man. So yesterday, every first place finisher if you, uh, from each group went directly to the finals and didn't have anything to do today. So they got a day off. That's a huge advantage. Uh, second and third place finishers, didn't matter what their point separations were or anything, have to do the last man standing stone. Originally, we're told it was supposed to be about 180 kilos, which is roughly 400 uh, pounds. It was moved up to 200 kilos, which is about 440 pounds. I think judging by the amount of reps, it was a good move. Just to be nice to have a little bit more, you know, that we should have known that earlier in the week. But anyways, how it went in in group one, plus there was a interesting twist, which I will get to later, which I'm sure, I'm still not even quite sure exactly how it goes. So uh, in group one, Rob Kearney went against Luke Stoltman and Stoltman edged Kearney out getting eight reps with the 440 pound stone. Uh, to Rob's seven, of course, most of all of these are going to be decided by one rep. So Luke Stoltman will join Group One winner Hafthor Bjornsson in the finals. It's after he missed out on the finals from the Last Man Standing Stone, which was a stone run last year against Robert Overs last year. So good on Luke. He looks very improved. He's had a good qualifier. Uh, unfortunate for Rob, who also had a great World Strongest Man and hung toe to toe. Uh, with Hafthor Bjornsson and everyone else. Of course, we know Hafthor has his uh, foot issue, but Rob looked incredibly improved and it will be with a note, he'll, he'll be sure to be making a final soon. On to Heat 2, we saw Konstantin Janashi, of course, won the group and didn't have to do it. And then Robert Overs versus Adam Bishop went. Uh, Bishop did a rep, Overs did a rep, uh, Bishop did another rep, Overs tried to do another rep and tore something in his right bicep. Uh, not confirmed yet, but hearing that it might not be a full tear. So hope, hoping, uh, my good friend, a speedy recovery. Not how he wanted it to go. Of course, congrats to Adam Bishop. He's worked, he's really wanted to get in the finals for a long time, for a couple of years here and is a good athlete. He looks like he's on point for Worlds and should do well in the finals. Uh, gutted for my friend, of course, and most of all, just uh, want to be healthy and happy. I don't think this is the last time you'll see Oberst at World's Strongest Man. Unfortunate way for it to go, but that's just how strong man is sometimes. In Heat 3, Martins Lee seeks one group three to advance to the finals, and Ivers uh, went against Tom Stoltman. Tom looked in a comfortable lead. Ivers ended up doing eight and then finally failed on the ninth where Tom hit his ninth to advance to the finals. I think this is the first time that two brothers have been in the same finals. I am sure if I am wrong, someone will correct me. But, you know, that's that's awesome. Again, Tom has a huge future in the sport and it's we have uh, three British athletes in the finals, which is a big improvement over none last year. So the last man standing stones have worked out very well to them and after no one, uh, you know, after Eddie Hall retired and then no one made the finals last year, it looks like everyone in the UK went to work and wanted to, you know, they take Strongman very seriously. It's, you know, Strongman's probably bigger there than anywhere. And, uh, yeah, three, three, uh, two brothers and three UK athletes in the finals. Heat four, we saw Matthews Kieliszkowski uh, winning the group, JF Karan went against Kevin Ferris. So this is a, another rule that we kind of learned day morning of. I don't know how much the athletes knew this, but it said if, uh, you know, one of, if the third place person couldn't get a rep at all, that then fourth place would go against them. And so Kevin Ferris, it looked like he was having some problems with his tacky. It was extremely hot. They left the stones out in the sun uncovered from what I heard all morning until people went and it's very humid so that's tough conditions for tacky and it looked like it was a little too liquidy viscous and uh just he couldn't get a grip on it so old martin christensen went in against jf Caron, uh but jf Caron uh, prevailed wasn't too happy from 
what I heard from fans at the event that he had to go against someone else and just should go right to the finals, which I kind of agree with. But I think the point is they want they want something to happen on this day. So we're going to see JF Caron and Matthews Kilishkovsky both in the finals from Heat 4. On to Heat 5. This was, I feel, the most interesting group of all of the qualifiers. Brian Shaw was pushed all the way by Novikov and just edged him out to get the group overall win and advance straight to the finals. And then uh, Alexei Novikov went against Trey Mitchell, and I said yesterday that this is going to be the highlight of um, the qualifiers. It's going to be, They're going to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And I, I think both of these athletes could have beat just about anyone else in any of the other groups in the Stones, including this group, including everyone in this group. Yeah, I said that. Uh, but Trey Mitchell, if you don't know who he is, after you watch his Stone performance, you will. A lot of people are going to be upset that Novikov is out of the finals, myself included. But Trey deserves all of the credit in the world. He is a phenomenal stone loader. They went for over five minutes loading stones. Whether you think that's how uh, an event at World's Strongest Man should be or not is irrelevant. They are athletes. They play by the rules. And Trey, by the rules that... Or in, you know, by the rules that they were given, um, advanced to the finals. Uh, so he had a you know seven point. Novikov had a seven point lead, but kind of knew um, that. I'm going to go a little bit into last man stones in a second, but you really have to give it up for Trey. He's a phenomenal athlete. I interviewed him in the past. I think I've mentioned that once before, and he's a good guy. Uh, he talked about being picked on a lot, and that's one of the reasons he got motivation. He was bullied as a kid. So I want people to be respectful of him. I mean, he did a 440-pound stone for five. And he, lo he looked like he could just keep going. Nothing was going to stop him. I think he would have beat anyone here uh, looking at that. Novikov just eventually gave up. Uh, just didn't give up. He just couldn't extend anymore on rep 14. Ended up with 13 reps, more than anyone else did, too. I think the only person that might have beat Novikov out of all this was Tom Stoltman. But yeah, it's unfortunate that someone who looks so promising and had so many points going into this event is not in the finals, but that's how it goes. We just, so I'm going to, then there was another new announcement, which was King of the Kegs, which I guess was put on World's Strongest Man Instagram a couple days ago as one of the events on day three, which somehow all of us missed. And it was announced that, so I've heard conflicting things if it's, for the 11th spot in the finals, which means you're the reserve or the alternate, or if there's going to be 11 total people in the finals. Um, so not too sure on that, but then what happened is all the people that ended up losing the last man standing stone did a, a keg toss. I think it was four kegs. And so Novikov had a chance to get there and he just missed, I think it was five kegs and then he just missed the fourth. Uh, Ivers ended up winning it, so he's 11th place. I don't know if he's in the finals or not, so if anyone knows better, let me know. I'm just not going to confirm that because we just don't really know. So that's another weird, interesting twist. There's always twists at Worlds. That's why these videos are so long because there's so much to talk about. And I ramble, and I know you love it. Anyways, so there's no fair way to do a last man standing event. No event should negate four events before it it just shouldn't happen we they are the rules the athletes have to play by the rules you can't hate the player you have to hate the game but i understand it's going to make really good television and world strongest man is a television first but if they're a television show first then they really need to decide that because if you're a tv show and you're trying to do stuff like the last man standing stones which is fun to watch but not at when you look at it as an overall sport. It doesn't make it fair. If you're going to go to World's Strongest Man, you should pretty much train stones constantly because they're going to matter more. And it made it let people kind of sandbag, uh, you know, uh, day day two a little bit, knowing that there's no difference, there's no advantage getting third or second. Um, so if you're going to be a TV show and you're trying to uh, make the show exciting for that general audience, the kind of people that don't watch me ramble in my garage. Uh, the 99% of strongman fans that just watch it on television when it comes up in Christmas or whatever, 
then why make it so damn heavy? Do you think that person on the couch cares if a yoke is 1,300 pounds? Or if, uh, you know, if they pull two monster trucks instead of one? It just really needs to figure out what it is. I think World's Strongest Man is still a great event, but just some of these things. It's, it's, Strongman is such a weird sport where it's a television show that a sport was built around. And World's Strongest Man has always been a television show, and we owe everything to World's Strongest Man. But a lot of the stuff is antiquated. I know a lot of the athletes feel the same way. Um, I don't think anyone's really a fan of uh, double point stone, uh, last man standing stone, any of the formats. This is maybe the best one so far that's the fairest. Maybe. I don't, I think, I just don't know. It's just, it's not how it should be. And unfortunately, but it's how it is. Uh, Again, I don't fault any of the athletes. I'm thrilled uh, for every athlete that went, and I think we're gonna have a good finals. And now I'll go on to that. <sighs> so, going into the finals, we have Hafthor Bjornsson, Konstantin Janashia, Martins Lises, Matthias Kielischkowski, Kowski, Brian Shaw, Luke Stoltman, Adam Bishops, Tom Stoltman, J.F. Karan, and Trey Mitchell. They're gonna be doing the look. So I'm gonna go down to the prediction. Loading race. Um, of course, we have Hafthor's injury to his foot. Uh, and looking at the events, I don't think that there's too many that are going to seriously affect it. I think it's more when you're moving with the event. It was harder for Brian Shaw with the huge carry medley they did last year, and especially the truck pull. Um, but if he gets through the loading race and can manage the pain, thankfully it's the first event, I think then the deadlift hold and everything else will be go somewhat smooth. I, I just... I, I don't think it's going to be as big of a factor as people are thinking. Brian Shaw still took third with it last year. Um, Half Thor, I mean, you, I think it's a lot better circumstances too that he it's a one-day event. I think it's a lot easier to manage the pain through whatever means necessary uh, with, with, through one day instead of, especially with a day off, instead of doing three events in the finals going all out. And then waking up with whatever damage you did to an already existing injury, hurting even more the next morning. So I think it being one event is going to be beneficial that it takes pretty much all day to do two events. So far at Worlds, it makes me think that doing five in one day is going to be a long day. But we do have to remember that some of these events, like the loading race, I assume they're going to do five athletes at a time. And there's also, of course, 10 overall athletes instead of 25 they have to get through. So hopefully it's not too long of a day, but that's really who it's gonna test is who's the healthiest, who's able to manage recovery in between the long breaks and the events and can stay focused is gonna have a huge advantage. So on the loading race, I think it's really gonna come, I think Tom Stoltman has a, a good chance. Adam Bishop can be pretty fast at carries. Kieliszkowski, is uh, the favorite in that event. And it just depends on the implements. I think Martins is very good at some of the implements, some of the bigger implements, like the safe last year threw him off, but it's if it's more standard implements, like sandbags, kegs, et cetera, nothing that's too oversized, like that big safe, I think he has a huge advantage. The deadlift hold, no straps. Uh, haven't heard anything if it's what it's gonna be. I was told it was supposed to be a side handle, so I assume it's a car. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll find out tomorrow. So it's going to be who has the best grip. Um, I think that really favors Brian Shaw and Martins. Janashi has a great grip as well, but sometimes his hands tear. Uh, and that's going to be a real wild card event. I think after the first two events, we're going to have a pretty clear idea because the other events are a lot easier to predict. It's a lot easier to predict who does well in the squat, the overhead medley, and the stones. We see those kind of events a lot. But there could be some... I mean, like, what if... Trey Mitchell or, you know, some of these, uh, or, you know, like J.F. Karan and stuff get in between Brian Shaw and Hafthor on the deadlift hold and he could lose, you know, five points. That's a huge swing. And then even if he beats him in, you know, by one in the overhead in the squat, you know, those are only two points. So after two events, I think it's going to be a lot more clear who's going to be world's strongest man and who's going to be on the podium. But these first two are real wild card events and I'm just having a hard time uh, going through them. Overhead medley. Depends on how heavy it is and what the exact implements, but you know, maybe half door is a little slower than normal. 
Kielishkovsky, he was faster than him on an overhead medley in Dubai, and they were the only two to finish it. I imagine the, it'll be similar to that with both of those athletes uh, up there. Martin's overhead's a lot better, but he looked like he struggled a little bit on the block in his training. But Martin's his training hasn't always looked exactly um, how it has in his contest, and I think he kind of edits it in a way to show that. I think he leaves some of the highlights out sometimes, which is an interesting move. But, hey, uh, yeah, and Brian Shaw just depends. He, you know, he's always good. I think Dubai was maybe a little hot. Again, it depends on the conditions and what the actual implements are. But I, I, I'd still say Kieliszkowski and uh, Haftor are the two favorites in that event. We're going to the squat, Shaw, Thor, and, and uh, Kieliszkowski. I'm sorry. And Lisi's are my favorite in this. Uh, it's going to be... Then there's just so many oddballs. Like, how good is Janashia's squat? I imagine it's good. His deadlift's great, but I don't think his squat... I think, you know, if he's going to pick two, his squat's a little better. Luke, Luke Stoltman's very statically strong. He might be, do well on this. Um, Tom's so tall. I think you might see him struggle like we saw Half Thor in 2012 before he got became a full Thor. Uh, JF Caron, always strong. How? But how are, you know, people like, uh, you know, Trey Mitchell and... Adam Bishop going to do. It's just how, if any of those other athletes can get in between some people, that's really what's going to decide that world's strongest, this world's strongest man. And Stones, Hafter hasn't really had to be pushed in Stones in a while. Of course, we saw how phenomenal Trey is at just going forever and ever, but is he fast enough in transitions uh, when it's a series to get some of these top spots? I still think Tom Stoltman's probably the man to beat, along with uh, Kieliszkowski. And Shaw and Half Thor are always going to be right there. It just really depends on who's the freshest at the end of the day. Whew, my predictions. I think with Half Thor's slight injury and the grip event, I'm going to predict Martins Lisi's to win World's Strongest Man this year. I think it would be awesome. Uh, I think he can do it as long as he has strong performances in the loading race and overhead medley and doesn't lose too many points there. He has to be in the top three to four. In those events and pretty much whoever wins this i think needs to be in the top three in every event uh this year um i think brian shaw could easily get his fifth uh he he got really pushed in the in the qualifiers but i think he's healthy uh, i was a little i was unsure how good he and strong he was going to look uh, just based on his huge travel but maybe it's helped him because he hasn't competed as much as some of the other athletes this year and he's a little healthier and a little less banged up and hasn't lifted as heavy because he's been on the road and being in these you know commercial gyms and hasn't even you know pushed himself as much on some of the events that that could always be an advantage uh, but i think i still think half is going to get second the it just it really depends on the squat how Kieliszkowski's going to do, I saw some video that made a squat look good, but they look slightly high. Brian tends to have a history of squatting slightly high sometimes too, so it depends on the judging. I think some of these athletes like Luke Stoltman can really mess things up for people on some of the static events. He's, his static strengths went through the roof recently. And we're going to find out who is a grip monster on the deadlift that we had no idea. I mean, Trey just might hold it for three minutes. We don't know. Tom, Tom Stoltman might do the same. But I'm going to go Martins Lises, Hafler Bjornsson, Brian Shaw, Janashia Kieliszkowski for my top five. Whew. I might I might think differently and have it all mixed up completely different in uh, in 10 minutes. I think I really think anyone in that top five could win it. I thought it was a lock Hafler going in, um, but the, these events are slightly different. There's not as many of them. They're a little different than we're used to. And I think it's, you know, with the injury and how strong people looked, I think Martins looked very good. Uh, Kieliszkowski's look stronger. It's crazy. Uh, I think any of those top five could win tomorrow. Let me know your thoughts. Whew. It's exciting. We're going to find a new World's Strongest Man tomorrow. Or it could still be the reigning uh, champion, Hathor Bjornsson. I'm Kale Beck. Thanks for watching.